This week, I take a ride on a plane that from the outside resembles a prison plane. Just look at this monstrosity. But what's it like on the inside? I find out as I take a ride on Germany's most controversial plane, Condor's Airbus A330neo. Well, the weather's getting a little bit chilly down in Texas at the minute, so I've done what every true Texan does when the weather gets a little bit cold. I've booked myself on the first flight down to Cancun, and I'm here for a few hours because I've got a flight out of here this afternoon on something pretty cool. So I'm flying to Frankfurt in Germany this afternoon with a German holiday airline called Condor and I'm hoping to fly on their brand new Airbus A330neo. First things first though, we've got to go get checked in. Uh, checking in for Frankfurt this. All right, then all checked in through security. Time to head to the lounge. Quite straightforward here at Cancun. So um, let's go and see where we need to be. Hola, buenas tardes. Okay, perfect. Okay, this is for me, Mr. Noel. Yes. Max time to stay. Max time to stay until your boarding time, uh -huh. 5:50. Okay. All the food, drinks included. Wi-Fi and password on the tables. Please, no smoking inside. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. All right, thank you. The Plaza Premium Lounge in Cancun isn't too bad really, there's a few sofas but they weren't too comfy and I did get a numb bum after a while. They did have a TV playing Mexican game shows though and a few bits of food and drink but not really a massive selection. Alright, so this is the lounge here at, at Cancun. It's quite small but it's not very busy thankfully. I can imagine it can get really busy and really packed here but it's not actually that bad right now. But about three hours until flight which apparently is delayed already so we'll see what that's like nearer the time but let's get some, something to eat for lunch and um, see how long this delay turns into. All right then it's almost time to board the flight to Frankfurt and let me be honest with you I'm normally a fan of the A330neo I think it usually looks quite nice that was until Condor got their hands on them. I mean, just look at this monstrosity. <laughs> what the hell have they done to that plane? It looks like it's wearing a prison uniform. <laughs> I wonder if that says anything about what it's like on the plane. I don't know. But um, anyway, we'll be getting on board Con Air pretty soon for our flight across the Atlantic <laughs> over to Frankfurt. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed a little bit about having to ride on that thing, but hey, we'll, 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 we'll get through it. I'm confident of it. All right, so it's 5.55 in the afternoon. We were supposed to be leaving like now. They're still offloading the catering from the previous flight, so I think we've got a bit of a delay. It reckons at the minute we're going to be about an hour delayed, according to the screens anyway. Um, but obviously that means that we go in an hour and the crew are only just getting on. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can be quicker than an hour, we'll see. I've got a bit of a connection to take into account over in Frankfurt as well for another video. So fingers crossed we might be okay. But um, yeah, not a, not a great first impression, I have to say. Finally though, it was time to start boarding or at least so I thought. Thank you. All right, here we go, time to get on board. But as it turned out though, it was not in fact time to get on board because we stood on the jet bridge for about 20 minutes waiting for them to let us onto the plane. Eventually though, it was really time to get on board. Hey, how are you? Condor's business class cabin on the A330 Neo is actually pretty nice if you can overlook the stripy atmosphere. It's got these lie flat suites in a 1 2 1 configuration, which is much nicer than, for instance, Lufthansa's business class, which is in a 2 3 2 config, meaning that you almost always have someone to climb over if you're not on the aisle. All right, then, well common on board the Condor A330 Neo. Thankfully, it's not quite as green and garish inside, although it is kind of blue and garish. It's like a deck chair painted at the back. That is kind of like a prison uniform, though, isn't it? really is look at the walls at the back of there and we've got this sort of similar thing going on here but you know what this business class seat ain't all that bad it's certainly better than Lufthansa's business class seat who are supposedly the full service airline of Germany and this is their holiday airline that are sort of semi-linked to them in the past but not quite anymore this is a German holiday airline and the business class here is so much infinitely better than you get paid many times more on Lufthansa that's a whole different debate. But anyway, this is quite nice. We've got like a little individual suite here. TV up there. We've got some stripy slippers down there. And there's some bed linen there. 
I don't know if we've got any stripy pyjamas to wear as well. We really would go for the full prison experience then, wouldn't we? I'll have to have a look in a bit. But then we've got controls for the seat just here. Packets of nuts just over there. We've got USB, USB-C, which is nice. Three pin plug, headphone socket. There's a little amenity kit just there, as well as a headset. And we've got sports equipment and accessories, it says. What is that all about? We'll look at that in a little while as well. I don't think we're going to be doing much sport on this plane. I'm hoping to get a little bit of sleep. It's about a nine and a half hour overnight flight back to Europe for this plane. Fingers crossed we get away fairly soon. We're now sort of an hour after we should have left. We're still nowhere near ready. They're only just boarding people. So um, who, who knows? Maybe we make up some time on the way at least. All right, let's have a little look at the immunity kit and stuff that they've given us on this flight. They've just come around with some OJ, by the way. We've got um, this thing here, which is, it says sports equipment and accessories. Interesting. Oh, it's like a travel thing to put bits in in your suitcase and apparently collect them. Oh, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. And then we've got, we've got fly good travel set made of sustainable materials. There we go. Let's have a look. Apart from the plastic tag that's sealing it together, I guess. So there we go, a bit of an eye mask. Not a brilliant one, but it's the only one I've got because I've left mine at home, like a moron. Uh, a pair of socks. And uh, we've got a lip balm and also a facial moisturizer. Toothbrush and toothpaste. And that's pretty much it. And we've got these stripy slippers. Apparently there are no stripy pajamas. That's a bit of a shame, isn't it? I was looking forward to rocking the stripy prison look, but um, never mind. I shall have to make do with my socks and my travel organiser, sports equipment thing. Um, yeah, we've got a um, duvet and stuff over here as well to use during the flight, of course, and um, a pillow as well to get some sleep, hopefully. Eventually, and about 90 minutes late, we pushed back from the gate and got on our way to the runway. Tonight then took us across the Gulf of Mexico, crossing the south of Florida overhead Miami and out across the Atlantic. We coasted in over Cornwall and flew across the south of England, over the Channel and across Belgium and Germany before landing in Frankfurt with a flight time of 8 hours and 51 minutes, cruising at 39,000 feet. One thing that is really cool that I've just found on the in-flight entertainment system though is this landing video section. You go in there and it shows you flight deck landing videos at destinations all across Condor's network. Isn't that amazing? And it shows you the whole approach and landing from the flight deck perspective, landing into Cape Town, for example, and you can watch them for airports all over the world. I mean, isn't that amazing? That's pretty cool. As we flew over Miami, the crew started the first meal service, and it's fair to say there was a fairly impressive choice. Now I do have to say, and I will tell you how much this flight cost, as always at the end of it, but this flight was significantly cheaper than my last transatlantic flight I did with Norse Airlines in their premium economy cabin which was pretty dreadful, the food was dreadful, it was just a premium economy seat. This is cheaper and I mean just let's just face it this is the starter for the meal that we've got we've got like prawns and stuff like that we've got a three course meal tonight all right so the main course has turned up it was a choice of the salmon a pasta dish or beef tonight and I've gone for the beef and just look at that that's amazing doesn't it that's very nice I'm going to talk into that now that's cooked really nicely as well that's beautiful for dessert I went for this chocolate mousse which was actually pretty tasty as well it's time for the Noel Phillips Flu Review. All right then, time for the Condor A330neo Lou Review. And the stripey theme continues with the wall behind me. On the other side of the Lou, we've got a nice mirror. A sink that's a little bit 
dirty, but then again, we are a few hours into the flight. A few toiletries and things there. Shaving socket. Um, a rather mucky floor. And a loo and my lovely stripey slippers. Um, so far, I have to say, Condor are quite impressing, despite the stripes everywhere that sort of make you go dizzy. But <laughs> other than that, it, it's pretty good. The crew are professional, I will say. Not, not the most friendly, but then they are professional and sort of good at what they do. Does that make sense? Am I just rambling on needlessly? But anyway, it's, it's pretty good so far. Enjoying the flight, I have to say. I'm going to try and go back to my seat and try and get a bit of sleep before we arrive into Frankfurt. It's got a full-on day tomorrow. That was the Noel Phillips Blue Review. Now, I seem to spend half my life traveling around the world, and like anyone who travels around the world regularly will tell you, getting access to your favorite streaming services on the go can be pretty difficult. Services like HBO Max and Peacock are pretty much impossible to get hold of outside of the US, which means whenever I want to watch my favorite TV shows like The Office, well, it can be pretty hard, really. That's what she said. Or he said. So it's thanks to this week's video sponsor Surfshark that I'm able to watch the TV I enjoy anywhere I travel in the world. Surfshark's a VPN that lets you appear as if you're in a different country when you connect to the internet, which means that I can watch my favourite TV shows anywhere in the world. Even better, it means I get to catch up on my British TV while I'm here in the States. It's a win-win. Aside from that, it keeps your internet connection nice and secure, even in countries that closely monitor your internet access and maybe even block certain websites. I mean, YouTube is banned in China, for instance, which means you'd never be able to watch my videos, which I suppose could be a benefit of living in China. But in any case, to install Surfshark, all you do is install the software, press the button to connect, and hey presto, you're connected anywhere in the world you want to be from, and that has some serious benefits. It means thanks to Surfshark, I can get my fix of young Sheldon in India. I can watch David Attenborough in Africa or even catch up on Only Fools and Horses here in Miami. Surfshark's giving you three months absolutely free when you use my promo code Noel Phillips at surfshark.deals slash Noel Phillips. That's surfshark.deals slash Noel Phillips. All right, then I come back to my seat and put my bed down to try and get some rest. Of course, the stripey theme continues into the bedding. <laughs> It's just everywhere, you can't escape it. It's like a barcode everywhere you look. So the bed is, it's, it's long, but it's very thin. That is what she said. If you can see where my arm is here, I've literally got, <laughs> I'm wedged in like a sardine here. Um, I don't know if you can see it from this angle of the camera, but I'm literally wedged in because there's a massive bloody arm race right just here, which is, not ideal, really, but <laughs> I suppose if I lay on my side, it might be alright. There's no way to lower that armrest, it's fixed. So yeah, that is probably a little bit of an oversight, I guess. It's a bed, and it's going to allow me, hopefully, to get a little bit of sleep before we arrive into Frankenfurters in the morning. So I am going to put on my eye mask and say good night. Good night. Morning an hour and a half until we land into Frankfurt now. I managed a few hours sleep. Not masses, not massively comfortable in the bed, but I managed to get a bit of sleep, which is better than nothing, which is quite nice. They've just woken me up with breakfast. I need coffee. As we flew over southern England, breakfast was served and I went for the omelette, which was okay, but it wasn't quite as nice as dinner had been the previous night. You know, we're just about to fly over the UK. We are sort of coasting in over Cornwall in a minute and one thing I just can't get my head around after living in Texas for like over a year now, well over a year it's just how dark it is at this time of the morning it's 7.30 in the morning in England it's still dark, crazy I know it's like winter there but it's winter in Texas as well <laughs> it gets lighter like half six in the morning
The clouds below started to clear as we crossed the channel and I was surprised to see Europe coated in a blanket of snow, a big contrast to the weather a couple of weeks previously when I was last there. We started our descent overhead Dusseldorf and the clouds soon built up again beneath us. The final approach though was incredible, we remained above the clouds until short final and emerged from them as we were already right over the airport, it was amazing. The flight over to Frankfurt this evening from Cancun cost me $1400 or around £1200 one way. For business class I thought this was a steal. Considering my flight with Norse from Gatwick to Miami, a shorter route and only in premium economy cost me $1700 just a couple of weeks before, I was really impressed at what Condor do in business class for such a low price. I booked this flight direct on Condor's website just a week before the flight. But now it was time to see what a mess Frankfurt airport would be in this afternoon. Welcome back to Frankfurt, not my favourite airport in the world, I have to say, but for some reason the second time I've been here this year and we're only sort of three weeks in. Anyway, let's see what a nightmare this place is today. Right then, welcome to Frankfurt in Germany. Condor, well, they were pretty decent actually. I have to admit they were a bit better than I expected they would be for a holiday airline that they are, um, well, that was actually pretty decent. And their business class, I have to say, the hard product, at least their business class, was probably better than Lufthansa's. Certainly the best business class that I've flown of from Germany, at least. The soft product, obviously, is Holiday Airline to a degree, but it was still pretty flipping good, really. Certainly much better than I thought they would be. Just, I wish they'd get that livery sorted out. And make them look, look a little bit nicer, maybe on the outside, but I don't know. Let me know what you think to that. It's a very controversial subject. It's Marmite, isn't it? You either love it or hate it. Let me know what you think to Condor's livery, and also let me know what you think to Condor's service down in those comments but in the meantime I'm off to get my next flight so thanks very much for watching from a freezy freezing cold Frankfurt be kind to one another and I'll see you on the next one bye for now